There's a lot I still haven't done a video on. All in due time. And yes, you can probably tell by what I'm wearing. This is a double feature. Um, you know what? Since they're right here within reach, one of these bottles, I do believe you've seen already, uh, back in the old uh, bedroom desk office days. When the production of these videos was so much less, uh, unlike the Oscar winning quality that they are now. Anyway, uh, I'm a big fan of Teeling's. And uh, if you remember, I was really impressed by this Irish whiskey when I did have it. Um, and it was selling for, it still sells for about the same price. It's about 50, 55 Canadian. But then uh, my local establishment, also known as the Manitoba Liquor Commission, or that used to be their old name. I never know what they're going by. It seems every couple years, everything here gets rebranded. Uh, good use of taxpayer dollars. Either way, uh, they started carrying a new second Teelings uh, for double the price, uh, practically. Uh, it's actually f around $90. And so I figured, you know what? If the other one was as good as I found it, this new one must be even better, right? Because everything is always better the more expensive you get, obviously. Isn't that Newton's law? Um, anyway, so I figured I would do a video and compare them. So we've got the original small batch, which is uh, the one that I did before. And that was the rum cask finish. And that I really found was uh, really made the whiskey. This one, the new one, uh, is in a dark brown label. Teeling whiskey, single malt, uh, non-chilled. So really, the only difference that I could find, and there's not a, there's not a lot of difference or even information in general written on these bottles, which I find kind of uh, weird. So like you think there would be more of a write-up on the back. There isn't, it's just the Surgeon General warning uh, and imported by so-and-so teelingwhiskey.com, blah, 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 all the stuff that we always don't bother reading. So I was just, you have really just to go on the front by what it says. So the original one, the white label, cream label, off-white label, whatever you want to call it, is just non-chill filtering, 46% finish in rum casks. Uh, this one is still the bottle I did the review on last time, which it's almost empty. I would have finished this bottle months ago, but ever since I bought this one, I was wanting to do a video comparing the two. And I just haven't filmed videos in a while um, because life has just been busy. Uh, so it was tough. It was tough to not finish this rum cask finish because this bottle is a hell of a bottle. It's one of my all time favorites. I would say I would always keep this one as a core along with the Bushmills, uh, red specifically. But I mean, they're so cheap, how could you not? And this is actually about the same price as the Bushmills 10, which isn't here. So, um, and I actually like this more than the Bushmills 10. I think it's definitely a better example and it's more different. So there's that, and then back to the new one, uh, non-chill filtered, again, 46%, uh, but that's it. It doesn't say really anything else on here. It doesn't talk about, uh, notes or anything on the bottle the label on here so on the rum one it says a further six months mutra uh mutration in x rum barrels imparting an extra sweet and smooth flavor unique to irish whiskey then on this other one the uh the new more expensive one the single malt instead of the small batch this is single malt it says their unique flavor and taste showcasing the best Irish whiskey has to offer. At bottling, it's 46% with no chill filtration or coloring added, which is also what it says on the other one. Completes an Irish single malt whiskey of true natural character. Teeling whiskey, dare to be different. So basically, it's just a single malt. As per this one, I guess, is not single malt. So let's compare them. Like I mentioned in the previous video regarding the chocolate whiskey, um, this is being filmed on an iPhone. So I'm hoping that the focus is, it's not going to be as depth as, as depth as fieldy as the other videos that I've uploaded, which were used uh, shot on DSLR. 
Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be better or not, but we're still in the growing pains of this. So we're going to just try out different things and see how it happens. So this is a single malt. And this is the rum finish. There is hardly anything in there. Honestly, hardly, I don't know if I just don't have enough in there, but I cannot smell it at all. Like, basically not at all. It just smells like a grain whiskey, to be honest. And I know I've mentioned before that I'm bad at picking out flavors, but I'm not this bad. Like this, this, I can't really smell that much on there. And again, I literally just filmed the chocolate one where it was like exploding in my sinuses. So I know I don't have like the Rona or something like that. This one, also not a lot on the smell, but it just has a little bit more of like that rum sugarcane smell, a little bit more of like a rich chocolate, sugarcane, caramel, but just really slightly. Again, the single malt, this smells just like a regular bush mills, to be honest. Okay, let's try it out. See if my memory is what I think it is. I mean, it tastes like, it tastes like any other single malt. Like it's good. It's not, it's not bad. Um, I just, I just feel for like the price, which is around 90 bucks Canadian. I don't think it's worth it. Like to me, this is just maybe a little bit better than Bushmills 10, which is around 55. I taste straw. It's very pedestrian, like very pedestrian. It it's, reminds me so much of either like the Bushmills White or the or the Ten, which I mean would make sense because it's they're both they're all Irish. But it's just it's so it's so vanilla without actually tasting like vanilla. So okay, let's go to the one I I, I remember really really liking the small batch rum cask finish. There is more depth there. You definitely do taste the rum finish. It reminds me of, you know, something you get from, from something like an El Dorado, just not as strong as like there's a really good rum. Video coming soon, by the way, on the El Dorado 15 verse 21, verse 12, um, to be continued. Stay tuned. Hit that bell icon. Anyway, it definitely does taste that you can taste those rum profiles, that rum flavoring, um, that sugar cane-ness, but it's not, it's not overpowering, obviously. Uh, it kind of reminds me of some other rum. There was a, a, um, a Scotch Glen, uh, oh man, so embarrassed I can't remember this right now, Glen, not Glen Fiddick, um. I'll put the picture up here. Anyway, that bottle, uh, it, it was kind of similar to this, except that bottle was way more harsh. That had way more peatiness and smokiness and just like uppercut to the chin, so to speak. Ben Reich. Yes, that's what it was. A Ben Reich rum cask uh, with a purple label. And I want to say it was 18 years old. Me and my cousin, we tried out a bunch of Ben Reichs and we were always disappointed. The, the rum one was the best one 
I bought, we went on a ski trip to Alberta and I, I bought a green labeled one that was more single grain or something. And he bought the rum one and I regret not buying the rum one. But either way, we both didn't like either of them that much. We tried a bunch of other ones at the whiskey bar and stuff like that. And we never really liked Ben Reich at all. But this tastes kind of like what I remember that Ben Reich rum cask, just not as harsh and a lot more pleasant. And again, for the price, with this being like 50-ish Canadian, 55, um, you just can't beat it. It's just, it's something a little bit different. This again, so this is good. It's just, I wouldn't recommend it for the price. I would again, just push it towards like a Bushmills Red right here. Trusty Bushmills, uh, you can't go wrong. This thing will conquer empires as far as I'm concerned. And everybody, Especially, uh, and it seems like in the YouTube world, especially like in the watch community, uh, with, everybody seems to like love going to Redbreast. And I, I'm gonna have to do a video on this too. I'm just, I've never been a Redbreast fan. I think when you're comparing Redbreast to Bushmills, and I know I'm, I'm going on a tangent here because I'm supposed to be talking about Teelings. Uh, I just think Redbreast is overrated. I mean, it's good, but I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. I think Bushmills is just as good, if not better for a lesser price. Shout out to Oshin uh, at the Timeless, well, formerly of the Timeless Watch channel, big Red Breast fan. Uh, if you love watch videos, he is by far the best in the game. Uh, so shout out to Oshin. Um, yeah, but I, again, just if you're going to go back to the Irish whiskey, I would say this one, again, I stand by it as a recommendation. I think it's a great pairing with this. But if, if you're thinking about this one, I would say save your money. Uh, Either go for this one that's almost half price less, or this one that's literally like $60 less. Um, so that's my viewpoint of it. Maybe you like it. I mean, I'm not again, obviously I'm not against single malts. I love single malt scotches and everything else. I just, for this teeling whiskey, I think you can do better. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you again for watching. It's always very much appreciated. Uh, we will see you again in the next video. And uh, who knows, maybe the next one will be the El Dorado Rum. We'll see what happens. Thanks again.